whole ride. Let's do this. Hello there, and welcome to my first ever After Effects tutorial where I'll be showing you how to do this. So first you're going to jump into After Effects and then we're going to just import whatever clip that you have that has an eye in it. All right, once you have your clip into your software, you want to set up your project settings. So just click on this little 8 BPC here, switch it to 32 bits per channel, and sRGB linearized working space. And all this is doing is just changing the way that light works in the program, and that is going to change how your final product looks. So just make sure you have the same settings that I do. So here we go. So take your clip and just make sure it's selected and then go into animation and track in Mocha AE. All right, so Mocha's just gonna crash real quick. Cool. So here we are. Now, the first thing you wanna do is just pick a frame where you can see the eye really well. It's not a bunch of motion blur. If there is, that's okay. That'll still work, but uh, yeah. Then just take your X-Blind Layer tool and then just click away around that eye and then just use these little arrows to track forward or backward. And then you can stop tracking once it goes out of frame because then you don't need to track stuff that's not in frame. Boom. So there you go, you should have a pretty good track. You can adjust things like, see how it's getting a little bit off like over here because it's kind of confusing the software a bit. But for the most part, this should work because you're going to be doing some more precise adjustments later on. All right, then just click export tracking data, make sure it's on position, scale, and rotation, and then hit copy to clipboard. Then once you're back in After Effects, hold Control, Alt, Shift, Y. That would be Command, Option, to Shift, Y if you're on a Mac. It's just gonna pull up a null. If you don't know what a null is, it's basically just a layer that holds your, holds your position, scale, and rotation information that you just uh, got from Mocha. And so just uh, paste Command V or Control V onto the null. And then you should have this weird looking, all these dots, and basically you're, that, that's your tracking data right there. So we haven't done much yet, but now we have to do a second track actually. So hop back into Mocha, you, you can just click on, yeah, just click on your previous Mocha project and delete these points because you don't need them anymore. Now that your information is stored in the null, this doesn't even matter. Okay, now go back to that good frame. It doesn't have to be the exact same one, but just pick a good frame, preferably where you can see the whole eye, all this, all this eye here. Now just go around. Great, now just do the same exact thing, just track forward, and stop the track, or it'll stop itself, that's fine too. All right, then track backwards. Looks pretty good. Now do the same thing, export tracking data, position, scale, rotation, copy to clipboard, and then minimize. Okay, then same exact thing, control, alt, shift, y, or command, option, shift, y, and then paste your tracking data onto that null. Now we're gonna stay a little organized here, we're gonna rename our nulls to I null, and that will be the first one that you did, just the entire I. And then the second one that you just did, we're gonna call that iris null. Okay, so now we are good. All right, now it's time for some masking. Here we go. I'm gonna hit Command Y or Control Y, and that's gonna bring up a solid, just a black solid. Uh, yeah, make sure it's black. And then um, let's call it uh, I Mat. And just turn it off for now so that you can actually see what you're doing, but make sure it's selected. And then go to a good frame once again, and use your pen tool. Then just click around, choosing the area that you want to affect. So usually I don't like to get the eyelashes in it, but if you have to get them a little bit, that's fine too. And to get this all curvy and such, I'm clicking and dragging. Just like that. It's really cool. It can get really rounded, really rounded mass. Okay, so you don't want to use too many points. You can always add points later, but taking them away is uh, not too easy. So I only use five points here. Yeah, use the curving feature of the mask as often as you can. All right, now we're going to keyframe our mask path here because I like it the way it is. And then parent, click this little swirly thing. Well, click and drag. Now you'll have this little 
Woo! Uh, and then bring it to the I null. So what that did was it um, parented this I mat mask that we just made, which looks something like that, and it tracked it to the I null. So now you should have a pretty nicely tracked mask here, which is pretty cool. It's not perfect, so that's why we keyframed our mask path so we can um, adjust it as we go. So like right now, this point should be here. So we're just gonna move that. But the good thing is you don't have to do this every single frame, you just have to do it every now and then when it starts to drift off a little bit. It's looking pretty good. And if there's anything blocking it, that's fine. Don't drag it here, drag it where the eye would theoretically end if say his if his nose wasn't in the way here because we're going to deal with the obstructions later. Anything that passes in front of the eye, we're going to deal with later. So now what's happening here is that the scale and rotation keyframes from the null here, from Mocha, are starting to turn our mask in ways that we don't want it to and it's getting smaller. And so one way to fix that is to just go into your transform options of the I know and then just figure out when it starts to do that. It starts to do that around here for me. So this frame looks good, but everything behind that, everything to my left is starting to mess up. So I'm just going to take all these keyframes to the left of scale and rotation and just delete them all because we don't need those. So now that I've deleted all those keyframes, it's going to look something like this. So it's not as bad, but we still need to adjust the mask path because it starts to go off the eye a little bit. So I'm just going to select the mask, move it along. Once again, the robe is passing in front of the eye, but we don't care about that because we're going to adjust that later. You just have to be aware of the edges of the eye. That's really what we're focused on right now. It's just the edges of the area that you want to affect. All right. So that's looking good. And then past here, we don't need the map because we don't see the eye. So just going to delete it. Make sure it's pretty precise, but Mocha should have done the majority of the job. All right, now that we've masked all this out on our eye mat, now we're gonna hit Command or Control Y once again, and then type Iris Mat. Once again, make sure it's a black solid. All right, we're gonna turn it off so we can see what we're doing. Now go back to that frame that we like. Okay, now we're going to use our ellipse tool and draw a perfect circle. Well, not necessarily perfect, but it should be centered. So hold uh, control or command and do that. Let's adjust that till it's pretty good and never change the shape of this because we can deal with the eyelids later because sometimes the eyelids will pass in front of this, which is natural. Now, parent it to your iris null. Let's keyframe that mask path. All right, once again, our scale and rotation are starting to mess it up. So I think starting at this frame, I'm gonna delete the scale and rotation keyframes on the iris null. Cool, those are gone. All right, that is looking pretty good. Now we can delete this part of it. All right, now that we have two successfully tracked and masked mats, one for the iris and one for the whole eye, now we get to go into the fun part, which is making the effects. Just duplicate your clip twice that I, I just did. That is Control or Command D. And so you have three versions of your clip. Just name one of them I, and name the other one iris. Cool, now we're gonna do the eye first. Set the track mat to alpha mat eye mat. Make sure it's right under your right under your eye mat layer because that's how it's going to basically like I'll show you. We just track this blackness over the eye. And so we're saying, okay, this clip only show up where there is blackness. <laughs> like I'm telling it to only appear right around where we have masked. So if we were to say put on a levels adjustment, levels, and brighten it up. We're only brightening up that area. It's tracked and everything. That is the benefit of using track mats, track mats, sorry, track mats uh, using Mocha to track. All right, now we're gonna start to apply effects onto the actual eye. First, we're gonna do a uh, color balance, color balance effect, and then with this, we're just going to basically enhance the red the redness in, in the eye here. So I'm gonna do shadow red balance, like 26. 
Shadow green to like a negative seven. Shadow blue to like a 10. And then a mid-tone red to 25. I would just mess around with these values um, and, and see what works for you, okay? Now we're gonna, we're gonna change the transfer mode to um, overlay. Now it looks really dark, so I'm gonna add exposure. Okay, and then we're gonna start it around like a two, and it's looking kind of pink. So we're gonna do um, hue and saturation, shift the hue over to like something like 20 something, makes it look pretty red. And then we're gonna boost the saturation just a little bit here. And then we, we can uh, clean up this mask here by feathering it like six pixels and doing like a negative six expansion or eh, like a negative three. Yeah, that looks a little better. Now, let's do, what if we put exposure up here? Yes, that's what I meant to do. Yes, do exposure over over your uh, your eye here. Maybe boost the saturation a little more now. And then let's add a little brightness and contrast on top of all that. Well, under all that, reduce the contrast a little bit. All right, so this is looking pretty good right now. One thing you can do though, which is really cool, like to start it all the way at uh, four exposure, like pretty high. And then as it goes along, we reduce the exposure. And so it like comes in like that, which is pretty neat. It gives that kind of effect. Pretty cool. Okay, now we are going to affect the iris. So now we just need to track map the iris to, sorry, alpha mat to iris mat. And now we have the iris here. Levels, um, actually let's, let's just do a brightness and contrast first. First thing we want to do is just flatten it out. So it's just brightness all the way, contrast all the way down. Um, okay, then we want to take all the color out of it. So just put this on there, zero saturation. Let's clean up this mask a bit. Do like three feather, negative three expansion. Yeah, well, a little more feather. Maybe like five feather, okay, cool. Now in order to make it look like a reptile, we're going to add a new solid. All right, so just take like, take your color adjuster, do something like this. I like to make it like a really dark red. That'll, that'll show up black pretty much. And then just click at the top of the pupil here. Make it um, perpendicular to the eyelids, kind of like that. So we're gonna click once here and click once here and then hold down the click so that you can expand these little arms and then click one more time up here, here at the top and drag okay now hold hold these little arms here and uh then hold your alt key that way you can adjust them independently like this just make it as symmetrical as you can with pointy ends all right you can turn it back on and this is what it looks like right now which is pretty cool but i think it needs a little work so we're gonna add a fast blur fast i don't know what happened to fast blur but uh fast blur legacy don't know what that means but okay <laughs> i'm recording a tutorial you want to hop in so that i don't uh, got I get... you this. oh thanks what the dog's collar. I'll throw it. It's right here. Is this hot chocolate? It's peppermint mocha. Mm. Look what we got. Whoa, that's pretty good. I know, isn't it? Show the camera. What's the camera? Right there. Oh, is it filming right now? Yeah. Wait, let me see. Hopefully it is. And rubber cockroaches. Nice. That's yep. tight. Okay. All right. Now that the pupil is set on the eye, let's just... Let's set the transfer mode to overlay. The reason I did that, because we want the reflections to come through on top of the um, the pupil here. Because the eye, like your eye is really glossy and it has reflections usually. So we want those to come on top of the, of the pupil to give it a more realistic look. So we're going to add some levels. Oh, there's already levels. Cool. Well, we'll just make sure that at the bottom. Okay, and then push that. Isn't that cool? I love that. That looks really awesome. 
no, until it like just starts to bleed over the eye. And of course it depends, like I can't guarantee it's gonna look like this for you because we shot this like really close up and with a really, yeah, really zoom lens. So might not look as detailed. Okay, and we'll just, so just mess around with the, uh, with the whites and the blacks until you get something like this. Take your, um, oh, sorry, let's name this pupil. Make sure you're parenting it to the iris null because cause it moves with the iris. It's not gonna move with the eye. So now it should be pretty dang tracked. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I think it's a little too white. Once again, just mess around with your settings and see what you can get. That's looking pretty dang sweet, if you ask me. Now, there are a couple obvious problems here. This is not something that you want. So we're going to keyframe our mass path of the pupil. So go to the first frame where it looks decent. To adjust the mass path more precisely, click on your clip first and then double click on one of the points on the mask and then you get this little box and what you can do with the box is you can move the position of the mask all around you can also like take a side and rotate it so that's pretty cool okay so you have to start playing it back and just see if anything looks off to you and then adjust accordingly two more things one thing is we got to clean up all this this junk here let's just make another uh mat make it black and uh just name this obstructions obstructions cool now take your pen tool make sure your obstructions is selected and then just click around the stuff that is passing in front of the eye like the robe the robe and the nose here so Oh yeah, and just delete your pupil before you need it. It's so like here, I will not be needing my pupil. Sometimes I think one of the things that sells the effects most is when you shoot it in a way that the effect isn't gonna work perfectly. And then you do more work in posts like this, like masking, and stuff like that. I think that sells the effect a lot better as opposed to just shooting it, you know, straight on at his face and him just sitting there. I think having him moving a lot and having his eyes be revealed like that is um, actually a way to sell the effect a lot better, even if it takes a little extra masking work. All right, that looks about good. We had to do kind of a lot of keyframes, but uh, the mask itself is looking pretty nice. So just end the mask where you don't need it. Trim it up. So now we need it to actually affect our clip and do something. So duplicate your clip, pre-compose everything except for your clip and obstructions. Okay. Pre-compose, call it crap. I don't care. And then um, put your clip above crap and then tell clip to alpha mat to obstructions. Feather that out like seven pixels. Okay, that's looking pretty dang tight. Just one last thing needs to happen. So this, the, the our new like element that we've put in here, this, this eye effect, it doesn't have the same motion blur that the rest of the clip has. So we're gonna need to go back into crap. Okay, so pre-compose um, your eye and your eye mat. Sorry, and also your eye null or else your tracking information is gone. But I masked. Okay, set that to overlay. Overlay. Make sure it's under iris or else it'll look like he's got a gold eye. I mean, you could go for that if you want, but it's not what I'm going for. Okay, iris and iris matte and iris null. Precompose that and call it masked iris. You also want to precompose your pupil with it. Okay, masked iris. Now, the reason we've done that is so that we can add real smart motion blur. Now, this is a plugin. It is $90, but it is worth it. Okie dokie, this looks pretty good. I think this is just a little too expanded. So I'm gonna go back in here, do eye matte, mask one, expansion to like negative four and a half, whether that's like seven. Awesome. All right, let's play it back and see what we got. You know it? 